Hello there, welcome to CXC Math TV and today we're going to be talking about measures of central tendencies and measures of spread. So you're probably wondering what is this measure of central tendency, right? You're probably feeling you're like, oh my god, so much new stuff and new terms to learn. No need to worry, you already know what's measure of central tendency. This has been taught from prep school so don't stress yourself out all right so what is measure of central tendency measure of central tendency is just we is us trying to just identify a single value in order to describe an entire data set just using a single value or a central value so these include the mean the mode and the median that's all is measure of central tendency now let's review, how do we find mean? Whenever you're giving a data set like raw data, you just add up all the numbers and divide it by the total amount of numbers that you added there. All right, so just as right here, we have the set X1, X2, X3 up to Xn. The mean would be add up all the numbers and divide by N because there are N amount of terms. For example, let's say, let's say Matthew obtained scores of 92, 87, 72, 83, 72, 88 for term 1 in ADMAT. What is his mean score? Now, another word they might see is average, and that's because mean and average are used interchangeably. So to work out Matthew mean, we add up all him scores and divide it by 7. When we add up all of those scores given that's 549, Divide by 7, which is 78.4. So that's Matthew's ad math average for term 1. Not bad, right? But what if you were given data in a table? How do you compute the mean? Hmm, that's kind of tricky, right? Well, let's have a look at an example. This example here, it says, At CXC Math TV High School, 10 students gave their shoe size in the table below. All right, so we see the frequency. We see that one person have a shoe size of six, two person wear seven, five persons wear eight, seven persons wear nine, four persons wear 10, and one person wear size 11. Okay, so if we want to now find out what is the mean shoe size, well, one person wear six, seven, two person wear seven, one person wear 11, when you're given it in a table, you need the sum of f times x. f is the frequency. So that column is going to be frequency. x is the data that you're given, the shoe size. That's x. So you get a new, you get a new table, f times x. So then you work out 6 times 1. You have to work out the variable that corresponds to its frequency. 6 times 1, 7 times 2, that's 14. 8 times 5, that's 40. 9 times 7, that's 63. 10 times 4, that's 40. 11 times 1, that's 11. You then add up the sum of f of x, and then you divide it by n. What is n? n is just the total frequency. So if you add 1, 2, 5, 7, 4, and 1, if you add all of those, we get 20. So when we add up the sum of f of x and divide it by 20, we get 8.7 and that is going to give us the mean shoe size or the average shoe size. Now, let's have a look at it this way, right? If you were to list out all the shoe size, right? Six and two person get seven, so you put seven twice and five person get eight, so you put eight five times and then you see that how many persons get nine, seven persons, so you put nine, seven times, they put ten. 4 times, then you put 11. If you add up all of that, you get 174. Then you divide it by 20, you still get 8.7. Ah, see there? And so we can clearly see that the mean is 8.7. That's how you calculate the mean for group data. The next one is median. 
The median is just the middle score of a data set when it is arranged in either ascending or descending order. So let's look at the same example here with Matthew scores. We know Matthew scores already 92, 87, 72, 83, 55, 72, and 88 for term one. Then we want to know what's Matthew's median score. Now Matthew's median score, first we need to arrange it in ascending order. And then the number in the middle. So we have three terms to the left and three terms to the right. The median is 83. So that's Matthew's median score. Nice. Now sometimes there are even number of scores. And in that case we have to use this formula where we have to find the position where the median is first, a half of n plus one term. That's when n is an even number of term. So for example, it says Brian Lara had scores of 88, 54, 32, 55, 57, 2, 23, 5, 13, and 60 in his last 10 regional first class cricket matches. What was his median score? So first, of course, we arrange it in ascending order. And then let's use the formula. The median given by Q2 is a half N plus 1. How many matches? 10 matches. So it's a half 10 plus 1, which is a 5.5 term. Now the 5.5 term is in between the 5th term and the 6th term. The 5th term is, we we'll look at it. What's the fifth term? The fifth term is 32 and the sixth term is 54. So we average that and we get 43. Good. So let's look at an example with a group data here. So the same example with CXC Math TV with the shoe sizes. What would be the median shoe size right here? So if we're asked to find the median shoe size now, we use the formula Q2 is a half the n plus 1 term. 20 plus 1 is 21. A half of 21 is 10.5. Now, how are we going to find the 10.5 term? Don't worry, that's easy. Create a cumulative frequency table. Look at this. So one person had wear a size 6. Two person wear size 7. So 1 plus 2 is 3. And then five persons wear size 8. So 5 plus 3 is 8. So Remember, it's the 10.5th position we're going for. And then 7 persons wear size 9. So 7 plus 8 is what? 15. That means a 10 plus 5 must fall into that category right there. And so the median must be the shoe size of 9. Alright? Think about it this way. If you were to write out all the shoe sizes for the 20 persons. Right? Let's write it out. 6, 7, 7, 5, 8. Then we write out our 7, 9, 4, 10, then 1, 11. And then we look at the middle term. Isn't the middle term 9? Yeah. So why not do it the other way with the frequency diagram? Easy. Now finally, let's look at what is mode. What is mode? Mode is a score that occurs most frequent in a data set. So let's look at Matthew's scores again. And they ask us what is the mode? Which score did Matthew get most frequently? From this data set, we can clearly see it's 72 because 72 occurred twice. So Matthew's mode is 72. Now let's move on to measures of spread because we realize that measures of central tendency, we know all of that from CSEC days. We really know all of that from prep school days and primary school, right? And even for some of us from kindergarten, no problem. But here's something new that we're going to learn, which is measures of spread. So you're probably wondering, what is measure of spread? Now, measures of spread, these are used to describe how similar or how varied a data set of observed values are. How similar or how varied are these data that we have gathered? So measures of spread include range, lower and upper quartile, interquartile range, variance, and standard deviation. Let's start with the range. Now the range is the difference between the smallest value and the largest value in any given data set. So the range is the maximum minus the minimum. Ah, example, 
Let's go back to Matthew's test scores. Matthew's test scores, we can see that his highest is what? 92 and his lowest is 55. So the range would be 37. That would be Matthew's range. Now, interquartile range. Interquartile range is a positive difference between the upper and the lower quartile. So the interquartile range is upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So let's look at Matthew's ADMAT scores again. What is the interquartile range? Now, in order to find the interquartile range, you see this upper quartile and this lower quartile? The upper quartile is pretty much the median of the upper half of Matthew's scores. It's just the upper half of Matthew's scores. That's going to give you the upper quartile. All right? So first thing we do is arrange in ascending order. 55, 72, 72, 83, 87, 88, 92. So the lower half is the first three test scores for Matthew and the upper half is the next three score. Now from the lower half, the median from the lower half would be 72. So the lower quartile is 72. And from the upper half, the median of the upper half is 88. So that's the upper quartile. So the interquartile range is going to be the upper quartile minus the lower quartile and that is 88 minus 72 and that is 16. So that's the interquartile range. Now, another type of range that they like to give you is the semi-interquartile range. What is this semi-interquartile range? The semi-interquartile range is the positive difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile and then we divide that by two. All right, so semi-interquartile range is pretty much interquartile range divided by 2. So we just found the interquartile range, so we divide it by 2, and that would give us the semi-interquartile range. Now the next thing to talk about is the standard deviation. Now the standard deviation is our first, well, this is the first major information that we're really going to use to to talk about the variability or the spread of information in a given data set. So the standard deviation is a quantity expressing by how much the members of a group differ from the mean value. It is often given by these two formulas. The first formula is used for raw data, the square root of the sum of xi minus bar x all square over n minus 1. You're saying what? That looks like a lot to remember. That's crazy. No worries. The more you practice, the easier it becomes. The second formula looks even crazier. The sum of fx squared minus the sum of fx all square over n divided by n minus 1 square rooted. No worries. It's very easy. Let's look at two examples and we're going to break it down slowly. So let's go back to Matthew's scores, right? What is the standard deviation? Now, Matthew's scores given here is raw data, so we use the first formula. Now that we're going to use the first formula, what we're going to do is we're going to create a table. Xi represents all of Matthew's scores. So his first score was 92. His second score, X2, is 87. His third score is 72. We continue and we write them out. Now, what was the mean? The mean, remember, we had calculated and it was 78.4. That's Matthew's ADMAT average. Now, we're just going to take the difference now between the mean and Matthew's score. So, you take the difference, look at it. 92 minus 78.4, you get 13.6. But then you just square it. So, we take the squared difference. So, the next one, 87 minus 78.4. That's 8.6 squared. 72 minus 78.4, that's negative 6.4, then we'll square it. We'll continue with the rest of the terms. And when you get all of those square terms, the summation symbol means you add them up. So you add up all of those, the 13.6 squared plus 8.6 squared plus negative 6.4 squared, add all of them up, and we get 1,001.72. Now you see that 1,001.72, 1 
all right we're just going to divide that now by n minus 1 n is how many test scores there are how many test scores are there 7 7 minus 1 is 6 so we divide 1001.72 by 6 then we square root it we get 12.92 so Matthew scores on average differ from the mean by 12.92 marks in other words that's the standard deviation 12.92 it's so simple so 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 simple but don't worry we're gonna have a worksheet video doing only questions all right about standard deviation now what if you were given to find standard deviation in the form of a table right now look at this one right here it says at CXC Math TV again it's the same shoe size and what if they ask you for the standard deviation of the shoe sizes first thing is we already know that this is group data so we know we're going to use this formula the sum of f times x squared minus the sum of fx all squared over n divided by n minus 1 square rooted so that formula right there we know what to do already to create our f times x column right we just multiply the frequency times the shoe size so 6 times 1 is 6 7 times 2 is 14 8 times 5 is 40 9 times 7 is 63 10 times 4 is 40 11 times 1 is 11 now that's just your sum of your fx but we need the sum of fx square so therefore we need to work out a column with x square and then multiply it by the frequency now 6 square is 36 then we multiply 36 times 1 to get 36 then we work out 7 square which is 49 49 times 2 is 98 then we'll go 8 square which is 64 64 times 5 is 320 9 square is 81 81 times 7 that's 576 now as we continue we get 4121 we add those up and the sum of fx square is 1542 so then we just put in those missing values in the formula 1542 minus 174 square over 20 divided by n minus 1 you put that into your calculator you get 1.21 so the standard deviation is 1.21 and that's it easy then finally there's one known as variance now the variance is just the square of the standard deviation literally if you square both sides of the standard deviation and its formula you get the variance all right so that's it so let's go back to the same examples with Matthew here Matthew's test scores we already know the standard deviation so to get the variance we just square the standard deviation and that would be 1.166.95 likewise with the shoe size if you square 1.21 you end up get 1.48 and that would be the variance so that takes care of our introductory video to measures of central tendency and measures of spread stay tuned for more hope this video was helpful all right stay tuned for more as we have worksheets on all of these topics right here so stay tuned for more and take care